Want to see your Skystone robot on the front page of Twitch? Submit your end of the year reveal video to FTC Reveal Night by Saturday, April 4th to be shown on Wednesday, April 8th. Go to tinyurl.com forward slash Skystone Reveal to submit your video. Let's go ahead and get started with the top 25. In the 25th spot, we have team 11212. Uh, and that's going to be the coolest from San Diego, California. Even though these guys had a rough San Diego championship, they were on fire at their Arizona championship and at their league championship, winning both of those events. They have a very quick intake for feeding and a unique stacking approach I haven't seen elsewhere. And I believe this clip that Tyler is showing, uh, it shows them practicing and you can see how they have like a little holder for their stones. And I thought that was a pretty innovative uh, solution to the Skystone challenge. Agreed. I see that um, basically not many other teams approached it in this way. And I, I know that that's a, a generic statement to make, but um, ha uh, being able to, I guess, have a unique approach when a lot of the top teams were dominated by the um, by the meta, essentially. I think that was that's something that really sets them apart. Definitely, yeah. They had a cool robot there. And in the uh, 24th spot, we have Team 6931. That's the Substantial Monocephalic Brainstem Robotics team from Baden, Pennsylvania. Uh, this team has been turning heads since 2008, and this year continues to impress. Uh, this year they competed in Virginia, winning qualifiers and winning as well at the Virginia State Championship. Uh, in addition, they won an Inspire second place uh, at the same tournament, punching their ticket to Detroit. Um, like usual, they have a great robot. Um, and their bot's tiny. Just, yeah, I know. Have you, it's, it's, like, it's, it's really this cool. big. I, it's so much fun to play against because especially when you're feeding, I got to play against them in some of the finals. They're flying around the field and you're just trying to keep up with them. But then you start getting contact with them and then they're just flying all around you. And it, it's uh, it's really fun to feed against them and with them. This might be the fastest yeah. FTC bot I think I've ever seen. It, it is the fastest Holy FTC crap. bot that you know, I have ever seen. Do you know how big the robot is? Uh, the robot is like this wide this long it it's like pretty cool <laughs> it's 10 pounds heavy i think oh, wow. uh, all, all it's made to do is feed it doesn't have a lift on it and uh they put a tape measure to put the capstone on that way they can cap on top of any skyscraper uh so they're they're built only to feed and um so so it's pretty unique pretty unique. Yeah, very awesome. interesting to see how that strategy sort of paid off at worlds because um we we talked about this in one of the earlier shows like earlier earlier way uh last year almost about like how the feeder how the feeder strap would be viable and one of the things we said was that they wouldn't be able to cap right that was like the essential problem quote unquote and so they seem to have solved it like successfully as you can see in the in the match so it would be interesting to see where they sort of how they approach um a line selection and what what really happened to them yeah all right so in the 23rd spot uh we have team 16896 that's Black Forest Robotics from Aspen, Colorado. This team had massive success in their state of Colorado. In fact, they were the winning alliance captain at literally every single competition they went to. They also were Inspire Award winners at one of their qualifiers. Winning three qualifying tournaments and the Colorado State Championship is no easy feat. It would have been amazing to see what they could have accomplished at Worlds. Yeah, overall, solid robot. I mean, they had the highest, I think they had the world record for a while with Data Force. And, um, it, like, they weren't just a feeder. Like, you see all these teams that, yes, they are able to feed all these top teams, but they can play just as well on their own. And I think that's something that was cool in this game, seeing those hybrid bots that could play both as a feeder and as a stacker. Um, and then you had some teams that picked one or the other, like Brainstem. Absolutely. And also with their with their strat uh, being dynamic, I think was an was a pretty clear advantage um, in earlier competitions, especially with how data force and whatnot were playing. Teams did play a very singular role. It wasn't uh, like the, the difference that I saw between like data force and the other and like the world record with uh, uh, circuit breakers and um, uh, recharge green was that one of the teams was playing. Uh, like one of one in Data Force's situation, one of the teams was a stacker, one of the teams was a feeder. It was very, very distinct. Whereas in the other in other situations, it was more dynamic, and it was nice to see a dynamic team playing a more uh, a more focused role. I think that that just shows 
like the 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 extent to which they can they can really impact an alliance in a high level. Yep. And in the twenty second spot, we have team nine eight eight nine. And that's Cruise Control from Flanders, New Jersey. So Cruise Control has been a solid team going 11-4 and four in qualifiers this year and going 4-1 and one in the Allegheny uh, division at the Pennsylvania Championship, ending in third place. Unfortunately, they did not qualify for the Detroit Championship, but have a high score of 160 with 20 points of penalties after a qualification match with Team 8393, the giant dinecephalic brain sim robotics team. Overall, Team 9889's uh, Cruise Control looks to be a perfect feeder with a large footprint, pass-through feeding to minimize uh, psychological times a tape measure park and a semi-consistent double capping mechanism can you expand on that double capping mechanism so i was looking i think they use a very like flat <clears throat> style of cap um i couldn't tell exactly what it was when looking closer at it but they they were definitely getting double caps in some of the matches that they played in oh uh, got you got you that, that's yeah. i think that was also like very important again going back to like the fundamentals of this game uh, being able to double cap, being able to have that ability is something that really set top teams apart. So very, very cool stuff. Yeah, no, definitely. So it's, I guess you're saying their capping mechanism is small enough to allow another cap on top of it? That's what I think it is. I, I would have to look closer at it to see. I couldn't exactly tell what their capstone was, but yes, I believe it is that. Wait, I know we're not talk, talking about them, but look at 97, uh, 90, whatever the spot is, 9570 right here. That's kind of cool. <laughs> small little robot there. <laughs> That's a pretty small one. That's funny. Um, and so let's move on to our 21st team uh, where we have 12384. That is Checkmate from Park City, Utah. So Checkmate has had a really nice looking and well functioning robot. Uh, they got a bit unlucky at the Colorado State Championship, but came back to be part of the winning alliance as a captain and first pick at both the Idaho and Utah Championships. They have a really nice three stone auto and a really fast lifting mechanism, which in combination with their consistent capstone uh, easily makes them one of the top teams. Um, oh, that. So the other thing that they did win was the Inspire Award at Idaho. That that's what punched their ticket to Houston, what, and yes. it just warmed my heart seeing how ecstatic they were. There was one video circulating around for a while, and I, I just I, it makes me feel good because that robot. Um, they were they were very active on the FTC uh, Reddit, and they they really were um they were one of the most helpful teams there. It was it was very apparent that. They, they came into the season with a very, very uh, skilled knowledge base, and they really tried to – one of their main focuses was to sort of disseminate that information. So it was really awesome to see them with such a powerful robot, with such powerful outreach, actually make worlds, even with some bouts of um, like unlucky, unlucky competitions. Yeah, them and Null Robotics, I think, were the two big teams that were posting a lot of their robot design. A lot of teams in the past just have been very secretive about their design. And it's cool to see the FTC community sort of transitioning over to, like, okay, share your design, try to copy me if you want, but I will still do it better than you. So I think it's going to be good to see. So let's go ahead and move on to the next team. In the 20th spot, we have Team 5485. That's the Gorilla Bots from Corning, New York. This team has won three events this year and was gearing up for the Excelsior New York Championship, which got canceled. They were a division finalist at the Pennsylvania State Championship, and even though they didn't have a traditional active intake, they're able to pick up stones effectively and stack them directly onto the foundation quickly and efficiently. Overall, the great driving and autonomous from this team has led them to get their rank in the top 25. Yeah, and this is one of the few teams that we'll see that didn't use a standard like horizontal spinner to intake their blocks, but they were still very successful with it. And another one of those teams is actually our 19th spot, which is Team 3409. Um, sorry, I was just going to talk about this robot for another oh, second. Oh, okay, go ahead. Um, this, I've just been watching this intake. That's really efficient. Yeah. I almost like that better than horizontal lifts because now you're just intaking right – or horizontal intakes. You're – you're intaking right into your um, uh, lift Perfect. mechanism, and you're always grabbing it in the exact same spot, um, which is pretty cool. And I guess in with this method, they could theoretically probably grab a stone who's been flipped over on its side. Um, I mean, I guess you, you wouldn't be able to really stack it, um, but they could still grab it and throw it on the base of that foundation to get some more points. Um, yeah. So, sorry, let's move on to our 19th ranked team. Uh, as uh, Ishan Three said, that's... 
3409. That's the Astromex from Kansas City, Missouri. Yep, the Astromex are another team that didn't have a horizontal intake, but they had a solid claw mechanism that would allow them to pick up blocks horizontally. Uh, their combination with the claw and their experience driving, they've been around forever. I can't remember a year that I've been around uh, where they weren't at the World Championship. Uh, it's allowed them to be successful. They've got a very reliable auto, and they worked really well with feeders when I was watching them. Uh, the feeder would put it just beyond the sky bridge at a horizontal. They would just drive forward, claw it, bring it back, and lift it up uh they took uh they actually lost the finals at the missouri state championship but they had taken it to three matches um and they would have advanced anyways because they won the inspire award very cool stuff i just I, just seeing the claw being efficient it's a nice sight to see it's it, it is unique we've uh we've gone over this but it's just it's something that i feel provides variety to FTC that um, has not been there for a very long time uh, because like the meta is the most effective that's what like that's what every team goes for but being able to sort of deviate but be competitive is something that's very impressive in my opinion definitely yeah, yeah. and uh, moving on to our 18th spot we have team 71 70 71 72 that's the technical difficulties from Plano Texas Simply put, Technical Difficulties killed it this year. Uh, they won every qualifier they went to. They won the Inspire Award at one of their qualifiers. They won the Texas Cha North Texas Championship and took home the Inspire second place there as well. Uh, there is no doubt that this team, who were powerful division finalists at Worlds last year, would have once again put up a powerful showing at Worlds. Um, so congratulations to them on the, on the 18th rank. Um, they had a beautiful robot and uh, had an excellent uh, run this season. Yeah. Also, yes. this was one of the teams that we had a little bit of trouble finding videos for. So if you have match videos, try to send them to TOA. Try to send them to our FTC Discord. It makes it a lot easier for us to find everything. and uh, Or the fun Discord, not the FTC Discord. Um, or both. Send them to both. But um, just try to get your match videos out there. That way we can find them and we can share them with the world. Absolutely. So in the 17th spot, we have Team 15146. That's the Garage Bot from Salona Beach, California. Wow. Did the Garage Bot have an impressive showing at the San Diego Championship? They took home, they took home the Gold Gold, being both the Inspire Award winner and the winning Alliance captain. They were also the finalists for the Think, Innovate, Design, Motivate, and Control Awards, and had an OPR of 88.6. Along with 12823 Crescendo, they scored 136 points in Finals 1 with a 2 Skystone placing auto and an 11 capped tower. It's interesting to see how they grabbed the foundation twice in Autonomous, but their 2 Skystone auto was their two skystone auto was extremely consistent so no complaints there just another one of those quick stackers with a tape measure park garage bot would definitely have been a competitive team at the houston champs just this this is also in my opinion we we've been talking about deviating from the meta but also doing it like doing it well making such a competitive robot is just as impressive in my opinion and like that's what i see just the ability um to be to be so consistently um, to be so consistently powerful is what what I think makes them makes them a very very good team. All right, in the 16th spot we have team 14039, and that's Irrational from Lexington, Massachusetts. Irrational's been a little bit of an underdog this year, uh, but has clearly been one of the top teams this season. Throughout the entire season, they lost just one match and were either a captain or a first pick of the winning alliance at every meet, qualifier, and state championship they were at. They have a four-stone auto, and they're very well-practiced at stacking. They can reliably make towers above 10-stone talls. And, like, 10 stones tall, like... At that point, it comes down to auto, and it comes down to whether you can double cap. So once you reach that height, there becomes very little difference in the point values. Agreed. And also, on a more uh, non-point-based <laughs> topic of conversation, making taller stacks is hard. Like, for the teams themselves, um, I remember that that was one of the main things that— um, one of the main concerns that my old team had is that just not— being able to make a stack that doesn't topple um, all the, the all the, that's like a hallmark of a very very successful team. Definitely, yeah. Uh, I know one of the strategies that my team figured out we could use, uh, but I know it doesn't work for everyone else. Is that when our 
um, uh, placing mechanism is up high, we can actually leave it there and hold on to the top of the um, tower when we go to move. Um, but it's I, it's always scary to me watch these 10, 11, 12 uh, high stacks getting moved around as they go to move that foundation in the end. Um, but one of the challenges and fun parts about this game. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier 2 plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.